What if the moon were made of cheese? Not metaphorically, not in a fairy tale. Imagine you looked up at the night sky, and instead of a dusty cratered rock, there hung a glowing, 3,474 kilometer wide ball of actual dairy product. Let's say, for the sake of this mental experiment, the moon is made of cheddar, a dense, aged orange block of sharp English cheddar. Because if you're going to rewrite reality, go big or go home. This is no moldy slice or soft brie. This is premium stuff. First question, would it even stay up there? The moon is held in orbit by Earth's gravity, and it exerts its own gravitational pull. So we'd have to ask, what's the density of cheese compared to rock? The real moon is made mostly of silicate rock and iron, with an average density of about 3.3 grams per cubic centimeter. Cheddar cheese clocks in at around 1.1 grams per cubic centimeter, about a third as dense. That means our cheesy moon would have roughly the same volume, but only about a third of the mass. And that changes everything. First, it would affect tides. The moon's gravitational pull creates the bulges in Earth's oceans, high and low tides. A cheese moon, being much less massive, would exert a weaker pull. Tides would shrink dramatically. The oceans would become much calmer. Surfers would cry. Coastal ecosystems, depending on tidal rhythms, would collapse. And your favorite beach may become a bit more boring. But tides are just the beginning. A less massive moon would also affect Earth's rotation. Right now, the moon slows Earth's spin over millions of years, causing days to get longer very gradually. With a lighter moon, this breaking effect would weaken. Days would stay short for longer. Less sleepy mornings, more espresso. Also, the moon stabilizes Earth's axial tilt. Without that stabilization, the planet could wobble more dramatically over long periods of time, sending climates into chaos. But would a cheese moon still stabilize us? Probably not. A rock is better at keeping things still than a spongy dairy orb. So, we might see long-term climate shifts. One century, deserts. The next, glaciers in Spain. Then there's the heat, cheese, melts. At an average of about 107 degrees Celsius during the lunar day, the moon's surface gets hot. That's hot enough to cook some mean nachos. Our cheddar moon would start to blister, melt, and form golden lakes of lava-like dairy. Cheese falls would drip down crater walls. The Sea of Tranquility? more like the fondue of tranquility. And once the cheese starts to burn and bubble, we get atmosphere problems. Right now, the moon has no real atmosphere, which is part of why it stays so cold at night and hot during the day. But burning cheese would release gases, methane, carbon dioxide, steam. The moon might grow a thin, stinky atmosphere of warm cheese vapor. The smell on Earth could be intense. Picture a full moon night where a warm breeze carries the scent of charred cheddar across the land. Romantic, maybe. Digestive, definitely. Astrobiologists would wonder, is that dairy-based life? Number. It's just the moon melting again. What about space travel? Landing on the real moon is a challenge. Landing on cheese, squishier, less stable. Imagine astronauts from Apollo 11 trying to plant their flag in a block of soft, bubbling cheddar. The flag melts halfway. Armstrong takes one small bite instead of one small step. But in theory, a moon made of cheese would be easier to drill into, easier to build on, and arguably more delicious to sample, if we could refrigerate it, which we can't. Let's assume humans decide to colonize it anyway. They build the first lunar dairy base, the slogan, the freshest cheese in the universe. But they soon realize the moon is shrinking. Earthlings, seeing a floating supply of aged cheddar, start launching rockets not with astronauts, but with bread and wine. The first interstellar picnic begins. Within decades, countries fight over cheese mining rights. Lunar cheese markets open on Wall Street. Cheddar futures skyrocket. But with every launch, the moon gets smaller. Tides weaken more, the orbit changes. Eventually, we destabilize the moon so much that it starts to fall apart. Chunks of cheese drift away, caught in Earth's gravity. Giant blocks of aged dairy fall into orbit, creating the first ever cheese ring, like Saturn's, but edible. Then, disaster. A cheddar chunk re-enters Earth's atmosphere and slams into the Midwest, 
causing the great cheese impact of 2072, Wisconsin is never the same. And yet, science adapts, people evolve. The moon is now half the size it was, but has become humanity's favorite resource. Lunar food trucks serve grilled moon cheese sandwiches. The moon is declared the first interplanetary UNESCO heritage site, with strict, no biting zones. Meanwhile, poets look up and still call it beautiful. Children still ask why it glows, and scientists still argue whether it's sharp or mild. So, what if the moon were made of cheese? The tides would shrink, the climate might shift, the smell would be alarming. But perhaps most importantly, humanity would finally have a reason to reach the stars. Snacks. And in a universe full of chaos and cold silence, maybe a warm, glowing ball of cheddar isn't the worst moon we could wish for.